Thomas Lawrence, the director of the film. <laughs> Yasmin Maradi, refugee and actor from The Jungle, The Play. <laughs> and Katie Morrison, the CEO of Safe Passage. Uh, so please come out and join us. I'm Deborah Francis White. I'm best known for the Guilty Feminist podcast. And I am delighted to be talking to you guys today. Um, the film's really extraordinary and it gives, I think, you a really good idea what, what it was like to be there and go through it. I think we've, many people have heard a lot about it, but if you weren't there, you can't imagine it. And if you weren't there, you, you can't, even if you've seen The Jungle, the play, you can't really imagine how people were living. And, uh, you know, I live with someone who built a lot of the jungle and um, a Syrian man called Steve Alley who came to live with my husband and me five years ago. And, well, he came to mind the cats. He has never left. And uh, highly recommend it. Uh, he's very much our family now. And he always says it was the best of times. It was the worst of times. And the hope that was there and the community was there and, and, and everything that we saw... Uh, was so great and so intense, and the circumstances and the conditions were obviously very, very bleak. Um, but it was a real combination of hope and community, but also uh, in, in real state violence and and the, the destruction of hope from people who had lost their homes and built this shanty town that was, you know, for a time their home that they had built, such as it was. So to lose it was everything, and to be promised, you know, the first round of evictions, but no, no, you'll be all right now, you're just on this smaller piece of land, and then just to bulldoze the lot. It's it's really, it's a very moving piece. So first, I'd like to say, Tom, how did the film come about? Like, when did you, when were you just recording, and when did you decide, hold on, this has got to be a documentary? So I initially went to Calais as a volunteer carpenter uh, with Jack and uh, Pete, who you see in the film. And um, yeah, I was, uh, I'd seen the refugee crisis on the news throughout summer of 2015. Um, and I'd seen a bit about Calais and I was quite curious about this camp that had built up and there was a church that had been built out of pallets by an Eritrean guy. And um, I was curious to see uh, a situation that I'd seen so much on the news about and there, there was a lot of very negative rhetoric about refugees, migrants, um, and I wanted to see it for myself. And then I, I saw a Facebook uh, post on um, uh, in December 2015 uh, calling out for carpenters and they were building shelters. I mean, the situation was very simple. It's men, women and children, a lot of uh, there was a lot made of the men in the camp, but obviously there were a lot of women and children there too. And, um, and they were living in tents, uh, and winter was quickly approaching. And volunteers were building shelters uh, with materials that were, that were um, bought with donated money. So we would just fill up a truck and, um, with, at Bricko Marsh um, and uh, take materials into the camp and just timber and uh, tarpaulin. So I was uh, working as a carpenter for six months. Um, I met Liz Clegg quite early on and she's, as you can see, a force of nature and you really want to do whatever she needs to help her. Um, so that she was a big reason why I stayed for so long. Um, and about six months in, I'd, I built up trust of people in the volunteer and refugee communities um, to make a film. And uh, yeah, I started filming, not really sure what I was gonna do. I started, I made a few webisode videos about the volunteer, what it was like to volunteer on a day-to-day -day basis, like a fly on the wall type thing. And uh, then the final eviction was announced and um, uh, I started filming nonstop uh, in the build up to that. And um, yeah, it was a lot and I wasn't really sure what I was gonna do with it. And then I came home and I realized I wanted to tell the story of the whole, the, the whole story of the camp as in the, the whole history of that one big camp. And uh, there were a lot of gaps in my footage mm. from when I was building, I wasn't filming. It's six months of not filming. So I started filling in those gaps 
I did a, a call out on, on Facebook and everywhere to everyone I knew calling out for footage and um, as you can see there's a lot of mobile phone footage, amateur footage, there's footage from volunteers, refugees, there's some footage that was shot initially with no artistic, artistic intention but um, uh, it was shot just for fundraisers on YouTube uh, and there's a lot of footage that is shot by professional filmmakers um, and everyone's been incredibly ge uh, generous with it. About 50 percent. <laughs> I think it's Eddie over Cor Morricone. Um, uh, yeah, um, about 50 percent of the final film you see is footage shot by myself or, or people on my team, and 50 percent is made up of footage from about 30 different sources. So but it's you, a real patchwork. You went there as a carpenter and became a filmmaker. You know, like Harrison Ford. I, I had made. <laughs> Yeah, and David Lynch. Um, uh, they, they, I had made films before. I just, when I first arrived, it seemed like that, that's the least, mm -hmm. it, it, it was so inappropriate to film. Mm -hmm. um, and I saw a lot of bad practice from journalists and filmmakers who came for just a weekend with the preset agenda. And mm -hmm. um, they, you know, not asking for permission to film and, and so on and doing whatever they can to get the story and, and then sort of harvesting these human stories. Mm. Um, and yeah, so it really was difficult to make the shift. Yes, I can, I can imagine, because it's so, I think, such a delicate thing to do, especially as a white person with a passport, to go and make a film that's not exploitative and that feels like a community piece. And I think getting the footage from various places has probably really helped that. Now, Yasin, speaking of which, you lived in the camp, uh, as a refugee, is that correct? Uh, yes. Is your mic not working? Uh, yes. Oh, it's thank you. Like uh, six weeks. And, and uh, what does it feel like now to watch it? And is it does it feel dramatic to watch it and think about that time? Or what do you think when you watch it? Uh, actually, first of all, I would like to say uh, I would like to say thanks to Tom and uh, those volunteers. They, as you see, they were very hardworking. As a refugees, we've seen a lot of things going on. People left their country for a lot of reasons, stopped there like a burger tree. The only hope, they had a lovely volunteer there. They helped uh, on their own uh, responsibility and, and ability, which is we appreciate it. Thank you so much. Without a refugee, without a narrative, nothing. So this movie is attached. By watching this movie, a lot of people, they might be thinking negative about the refugees. They might be changing their mind. That's why it is very hard to hate someone when you hear their story and laughing at their joke. So that's why refugee, the only things we have this story. That's why it's connected between humanity. Thank you. And uh, yes, I was in uh, Jungle Kale during that time. Uh, it was a very hard time, to be honest, because everybody we live with uh, different uh, reasons. Mm -hmm. And uh, we stopped there, and we didn't know that. We having uh, hope, the only things we have hope. We didn't know what's happening for us. It was like a purgatory uh, on in, um Unexpected, unexpected journey mm. began, and uh, when you realize the only things uh, we realize or real name is gone, and the people call us refugee. Sorry, is that yeah. Sorry. Okay, so when they call us refugee, but they forgot our real name, which is we want to say, okay, we are not refugee. When you say a lot of people came there with different uh, reason. So I came there with a different reason, and I met a lot of people from different nationality. And I never met, for example, people from Africa, Sudan, or Syria, and different background. When, when I was uh, with them, it's like, it's about the humanity. Mm. When you see a lot of people, white, black, brown, everybody there, that doesn't matter where you come from. We just like to help each other. What about the human right to other human beings? So that's why one of the good things I found that whatever we were in a very difficult situation, I'm so, so glad. Uh, 
you are so right about story because the play that you were in that was called The Jungle, yes. that really changed my life. And I went from someone who was in fact living with a refugee to someone who went, oh, there's so many more people who are like Steve, who are still back in France, who are still back in all sorts of places and we need to go and help. And that's when the Guilty Feminist stepped up and started doing more with refugees and more with Choose Love. Uh, that play really affected me. I saw it lots of times and I forced people to come. Um, brought, brought, constantly brought people and talked about it on the show because it was such an important show. And you're right, you know, Hannah Gadsby says, story is our cure. And I think that's really right. The more that we can share stories and as you say, see people laughing at jokes, it's hard to hate someone after you've laughed at their joke is, a, is great. Um, Katie, Safe Passage was operational in Cannes when this film was shot. Can you tell us about what Safe Passage is designed to do? Yeah, so Safe Passage is a charity that supports refugees, particularly unaccompanied children, basically with legal advice primarily and legal representation. So we were set up to try and help the unaccompanied children that volunteers um, found in Calais try and get access to their family members in the UK, which for most of them was why they were there in the first place. Mm. And we fought a lot at the beginning to open up those access routes, uh, legal routes for children to um, get across to the UK. Um, now we also do a huge amount of campaigning for change and I don't want to kind of bring the kind of tone down but obviously at the moment we're campaigning against the government's so-called legal migration bill um, which will effectively make it um, impossible for people to seek asylum in our country yeah. Um, and yeah we're working very hard with other refugee charities to to fight against that um, and the kind of toxic narrative around it. Yeah it's it's uh, I think a uniquely brutal <coughs> cabinet that we've had in the last few years some home secretaries that just make you gasp at the things they say so Oxford Bregman saying it is her obsession and her dream uh, to send refugees to Rwanda, but she said it with a smiling face, and yeah. I was like, oh my God, do you know what your face looks like right now? Because you look like Richard III, it's really terrifying. Um, uh, now you've heard, we, we don't have massive amounts of time, are there any questions from you uh, that you are dying to ask? Because, yes, what's your name? Jane, who would you like to ask? Great. Oh, thank you. Hi. Yeah. Um, I was just wondering how else we could access this film after after this showing. Can because I'd love other people in my. What a great and helpful group. question. How um, can, I mean, can everyone can, see can it? We can we stream it? Share it? Can we yes. stream it? Can we send it to our racist and fathers in law <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> not that my father was not racist, just to be clear. But I just that was just an example. I've got close, uh, close to that, though, brother in law. Um, 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 and he came to see it and he liked it. He was, he was, uh, it was good. Um, and no, I'm, I'm joking. Um, yes, so we do have about, I think it's eight more screenings uh, around the country. Uh, I'm going to be appearing at all of them. Um, but yes, the film is available to stream for one year on Curzon Home Cinema. So please. Uh, tell everyone. Do we pay it. per film or do we have to join up and become co-op members? You can pay per film. Okay, so yeah. if you've got friends who really want to see it but don't want another subscription, they can yes. curse on home cinema right. and then hopefully you'll get another streaming deal. Hopefully there'll be another streaming deal. Okay, but yeah. do tell people If you make enough it. noise about it. Yeah, yeah. well, if everyone goes press. on social media and says, where can we see it? Where can we see it? Who's going to stream it? It, it can sometimes tip the scales and I'm sure if it goes off Curzon you'll find some way of keeping it online and yes. and if this community here could just keep on telling people about it, what you've seen, sending people links to the story, that would be really helpful. Yes? Hi, um, it's a great film. <laughs> um, well done, it's a brilliant film. Um, I just want to ask an opinion for the three of them. Do you think a film like this um, help to change the narrative about migrants? Because as she was saying, it's, it's, it's getting worse. This government is completely, you know, it's... so do you believe that something like this, because when you have a volunteer like Jack saying, 
that sentence is perfect. It is so fucked up that people like us that care about the, mm. the refugees and people here, um, the governments don't care and it's getting worse. Do you think your film can really help to change the narrative? Or, and for, for them as well, in the opinion? Great. What are, what are you hoping to achieve with this film? So I don't think any one film can... You, you can't really you quantify like how much enormous change like one, one one film can't change the world but i think i like to think of the film as one small thread in a in a much broader tapestry of th there are a lot there are a lot of projects like the jungle play or there, there are books and plays and albums and and all sorts of things people that have had this experience or have, ex uh, have encountered this injustice and wanted to talk about it and express it um and i think like Liz says at the end of the film, it's it's impossible to know the knock-on effects of that. But I, I do think it, it's it, it's uh, part of a wave, it's part of a choir of voices that are just reminding us that um, people do fundamentally want to help other people. I think they are inclined to do that. And um, there are a lot of very loud and powerful voices encouraging us to be fearful and hateful of other people but i i think time and time again despite in, in enormous adversity there are always people who choose to be kind um and that's what i wanted to make a film about and i know yes it, it's all it's a constant struggle it never ends but um I think it, it plays one small part. I'd never, I'd never assumed that my film could change the world, but it's, it's a little part of a much bigger thing. Yeah. Maybe, do you have something to say? Yeah, I think I can, we can probably say what you can't, <laughs> which is I, I do think it's really, really important because ultimately, you know, we do live in a democracy and it is about what people think and how people feel about issues and that is what creates change and that's why we're all we're trying as a whole community of refugee organisations to raise our voices against the acts of the government. And if there are enough people out there that are telling a real story of human beings who are trying to reach a place of safety, which is everybody's human right, then that is how you create change. That is how you create change. So this film is a vital ingredient in that mission. I think also we've got to stop trying to change people who are so... Po we go, people go on Twitter and argue with people <coughs> who are never going to change. Actually, there are people in your community who are not on Twitter, who are perfectly nice people who just don't know anything about it, and think, oh, how could I help? Or, I don't, I'm just not involved, and that's not my business. And it's actually those people that we need to win over, because that is most people um, who just don't know. And I think this film is a great way of showing people, hold on, this is, I love the name of it, on our doorstep. It's like, guys, this was on our doorstep, and it's still there, and... What are we doing about it? It's like, it's not far flung, it's right here. Um, any other questions? I know it's very hot. Uh, yes? Oh, sorry. No, no, it's not. Uh, I think it's, uh, to respond to a question is, you know that uh, each refugees come from a different country with different reasons. The more you share their story, the more you realize it could be happen to one of us. It's imagine you are in UK, yeah? Suddenly you woke up and you find out, okay, I have to leave my country. We don't even say goodbye to my family. And war or anything could happen. Listen, it's, for, for example, a couple of years ago, a year ago, Ukrainian was very, you know, it was very safe. Nobody thought, you know, people from Ukrainian come, you know. This is the something's uh, journey. We, we can't guarantee anything in our life. We never guarantee. We don't know what's going to happen next year. So it could be happen to one of us. So imagine, the more the people see the story, the more people they're going to be sympathy. Okay, this is good. But un unfortunately, a lot of people who don't think anything is like uh, judging uh, but when you see the movie, oh, this is the reality. This what's going on? What happened? Oh, each of them they have a different story, different uh, narrative, which is could be very very helpful in in our ability. For example, my my ability. Okay, I'm gonna do on on my best, sharing on social media. Uh, each of us is it could be very helpful. Thank you. 
Uh, sorry, I'd just like to add, because um, I think it's important, um, <laughs> that um, we didn't uh, we didn't want to make a film that was really uh, pushing, like uh, preachy, to be honest. We didn't want a film that was telling you what to think and feel. We wanted to immerse you in this world and this experience and to have a small taste of the complexity and the gray areas of that and, and to give you the space to make up your own mind. And I think um, there are a lot of people, we, we didn't want to preach to the choir is essentially the phrase I was looking for. And um, we've had, I, I've had some really quite remarkable emails, uh, voice messages. One guy sent me a voice message, it was an hour long, um, from my hometown, which is a very conservative um, uh, Brexit, Brexit -y home <laughs> area. Um, and uh, he essentially said that, you know, he'd, he'd had his uh, misgivings about refugees. Uh, he was not, let's say, not part of the choir, you know, very um, skeptical um, and didn't really ha have all that much compassion that he came to see my film. And it completely turned his world upside down. We had another person whose parents came and they were previously quite anti-refugee, um, uh, ex-military I think it was, and they saw the, f and their son had volunteered in Calais, and that, but he managed to get them to come and see the film, and after seeing it, they were just really, they were just reminded of the humanity of the people there, and they said, oh yeah, I, I was just so, they're just people, they're just human beings, and that, that was all it, you know, sometimes I worry like, oh God, I haven't put all the messages, I haven't put all the important messages in the film, but no, no, just that scene with the piano really hits people and they're like, oh yeah, they're just human beings. And this couple changed their will to give money to, to a refugee supporting charity just after watching the film. I can't, I've got the message on Facebook you know, that says this, apparently it's true. Um, yeah, I, I can't believe it, so yeah. So I can at least comment on that. It, that's, that's why I want to say it, because as you mentioned, the media used to go there and we feel like, um, as you said, like the journalists used to go there with an agenda. What they want to show is they have already in their minds like a picture of like how to show you know, how dirty it is, how irregular everyone is. And that's the thing, like, you, you show, like, humanity. Um, and, yeah, I, I love the film because it's exactly that, like, without any political agenda, any, you know, like, a speech on, on how to show the people, that's it, and, yeah. Thank you. Let's have one more question. Thank you. Um, I was curious if you know what Liz is up to now. Loves Liz, um, and also if you've stayed in touch with any of the people you met, and yeah. oh yeah, Annie, where's Annie as well? Um, Annie is now living. <laughs> um, so Annie's never. Jack is actually here on the screen. Um, Jack and Annie are a couple. You, it's not in the film, but uh, they they met in Calais, and uh, they're still together. Um, and they live together in South London. And uh, Annie is now teaching sex ed um, uh, to, uh, around schools oh. uh, around the country. Uh, yes, because you have a relationship with Annie. You, you met Annie in uh, well, UK. Yes, Calais. absolutely. And Liz, what's happened to Liz? Liz is uh, working for uh, an organisation supporting refugees in Bristol now. Uh, but uh, she, for a long time, um, uh, all the young boys, mostly Afghan, who uh, made it across to England, uh, whichever way, uh, either by truck or by Eurostar, um, they arrived in England and having met Liz and, and her having become like a surrogate mother to them, uh, they all insisted on seeing Liz. Mm -hmm. And so she was in a very difficult predicament of all these kids they're supposed to be staying with their foster families. Mm. A lot of them did end up in Birmingham, and so she actually settled down in Birmingham and semi-adopted Jamil. Oh. Um, and there are a lot of other Afghan boys that would be there. 
day and night. It was really hectic. It was really intense, actually. Mm. It was about. It was quite normal to go and visit Liz, and there'd be at least eight Afghan teenagers making a, a lot of fuss. It was. There's very few people that would put up with that. It was. Wow. It was. It was an ordeal staying there for a weekend. But for Liz, it was her whole life for uh, about three, four years. Um, uh, so she's still working with refugees in, in Bristol. And um, Jamil is now 19, working as a barrister. Oh. He's got his own apartment, uh, his own flat in Birmingham. He's in Birmingham. Yeah. Working as a barrister, he's 19. Yeah, I think so, yeah. yeah. How can he be a barrister? Well, no, not a barrister. Oh my god, I'm so terrible with words. Do you mean a barrista? I mean a barrister. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this child is so brilliant as a 19 year old human rights lawyer. <laughs> I'm glad I questioned that though, because I was like, don't undermine the story, Tom, but it's not adding up and we, a lot of integrity is truth to us here. I said, well, listen, I'm delighted he's a barista and he's delighted he's got his own. I saw a brilliant play at the Stratford Theatre East that has since toured, if anyone gets a chance to see it, written by a refugee called How Not to Drown, and it's about refugees underage going into care and the experience of being in care and how difficult it can be uh, to be then fostered and passed from household to household and how damaging that can be. You think, oh, well, they're the lucky ones. They got here, they're in hats. Like, oh, no, 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 um, So can I ask you, Katie, how we can best support Safe Passage? Uh, because this is a wonderful documentary. We can share it, uh, especially when we're allowed to stream it. We can insist, we can invite our relatives over for Saturday lunch, and then we can say, oh, we're all watching a documentary. There's all sorts of ways of doing it. But how can we help Safe Passage who are trying to work on getting children and, and especially unaccompanied minors over now and making sure they're safe? Thank you for asking. <laughs> um, well, of course, you can support us financially. We're a really small charity um, working, yeah, in very, there's about kind of 25 of us trying to do this work in four different countries at the moment. Um, you can also follow us on Instagram. We're doing loads of campaigning actions and, yeah, kind of lobbying the government, talking to opposition parties about what safe routes for refugees mm -hmm. could and should look like. So if you follow us on Instagram or sign up to our email, um, we'll be asking you to add your name to our campaign. So, yeah, e any of those would be very, very much appreciated. Thank Do you. you have any hope if Keir Starmer gets in things really different? significantly better, a little bit better. A, not at all better. B, a little bit better. C, significantly better. D, worse. Don't say D. <laughs> um, I am an optimist, so I have to believe that things can only get better. Oh, that's what they said in 97. I think that was their song. Um, turns out, no. Turns out things can get a, a fuck sight worse. But we need uh, all of you in that's order for that to happen. What was that? We do need all of our voices in order yeah. for that to happen. We really, really do, because there are a lot of people who are just like, pull the ladder up, Jack, and frightened, and you know, we need many more stories, we need many, many more connection, and we need people also talking to their friends and people with their faces. Uh, I think posting is great, but has limited ability to persuade. Um, so the more you can talk to people with your face and listen to what they're saying, and not immediately go, well, then you're a racist and I mustn't talk to you, but instead say, why do you feel that way, and ask people, introduce people in introducing people to refugees who are just, as it turns out, people who can't be where they want to be, um, you know, which is you say could happen to any of us. Um, is there any, did anyone come here to say something today and they didn't get to say it? Me. Yes? Hello, sorry, I'm one of the producers on the film. I just wanted to say that it really does make a massive difference to independent film if you do try and tweet, Insta, whatever about Let, the film. It really, I don't box? know how to use Insta, as Ross knows. Um, <laughs> but, you know, it really makes a difference to us. We haven't been paid for the film. We probably never will. But it's a passion project for us. And the more that you can raise awareness about it and uh, get it out there, it really does make a difference to the film. So please do. Thank you. Um, if anyone's on Letterboxd. What is uh, that? I've never heard of it. It's, it's like social media for cinephiles. 
Okay. Letterbox. Yeah, I yeah. Can't you do can, another thing. Tom. You, you can, not. you can, you can list all the films that you want to watch. Mm. You can list all your favourite films. See what your friends have said about those films. Fine, I'll do Letterbox. <laughs> Fine. I'm, I'm not, but I'm not. We are, happy we are about on it. Letterbox, and we've okay. already got a handful of five star reviews. On Have Letterboxd. you? Yeah. Great. Okay. All right. Well, oh, can we review it as well? We can review it on Rotten Tomatoes and IMDb. Yeah. Yeah. Um, could only if you it? give a good review. Yeah. Obviously, give it five stars. <laughs> but that will help. That really reviews really do help. Um, so can I just ask, Yasin, do you have anything? Did you come to say anything you didn't get to say? Mm. No pressure. Thing is, uh, that's it. You know, uh, I want to tell you some things. We all kind of all refugees. You know that we not. This world is very temporary for all of us. For like fifty, a hundred years from now, and nobody on, on, uh, of us gonna be on the planet. So new people, new generations. So that's why we all kind of refugees. So the more we know about uh, people. Uh, and refugees, the more you feel like uh, sympathy with them, and you will know yourself more as well. Yeah. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you very much. I think it's appropriate for Yasin to have the last word. Um, please, please, please support on our doorstep. Uh, what's the What's the website? On our doorstep doc. Com. On our doorstep doc com. Thank you so much. You've been one of the finest audiences of a generation. It's very hot. Go have a drink. Get some fresh air. Goodbye. <laughs>